Hello, my name is Nick Debra. I am an independent instructor and author in the fields of data visualization and dashboard design. And in this short video, I wanted to talk about what I called Mara Macro Charts, or sometimes called Macro Charts, and why I actually don't really use them uh, in most of my work uh, these days. And so if you're not familiar with this chart type, let me just briefly explain to you uh, what's going on in this particular uh, Mara Macro Chart. And so here we are basically looking at the market breakdown of a, a vehicle market with different types or segments of vehicles and also by brand. And so based on this Marameco chart, for example, we can see uh, which segments or types of vehicles have uh, large uh, you know, market shares, they're wide columns or narrow market shares. And also within each segment, we can see uh, which brands had a, uh, a lot of that segment or a relatively small amount of that segment. And like I said, I don't actually recommend using these because uh, really the number one reason is that they're just kind of hard to read. I've seen many people struggle to read these and, uh, you know, myself as well. I have to find, I find I have to sort of concentrate a lot harder than I have to with other chart types. And I think it's because there's just kind of a lot going on cognitively. Like there's, uh, I have to keep track of the, the height of each rectangle, but also the width, which means something different. Also the, uh, the area or the size of each rectangle, which also means something different. And so there's just kind of too many things going on, I think, uh, for most of us to read this chart uh, easily. It, you can read it. It just requires a lot of cognitive effort, which is probably why they're actually quite rare. I mean, you will find them in certain fields, you know, management consultants, for example, tend to, to like to use them. But uh, most of the people who I have shown a chart type like this to uh, have never seen one before. And so, and I think there's probably good reason because like I said, you know, most audiences really will struggle to, uh, to read a chart like this. And so uh, whenever there's a chart which requires a lot of cognitive effort, I always ask myself, is there maybe a kind of a simpler chart that might communicate the same thing? And so if these four insights, the ones that are in the gray text here are the, what I was trying to communicate, well, then maybe something like just a regular 100% stacked bar chart like this uh, with a, you know, a, to a set of total bars beside it well, you know, I can see a lot of the same insights, right? You know, I can see uh, where, uh, you know, which market segments were large, which ones were small. Uh, I get kind of a breakdown uh, of each segment by brand. So I can see within hatchbacks here, a BMW had a small market share and Mercedes had a uh, large uh, market share again, you know, within that segment. And so a term like this can communicate these particular insights probably with less kind of mental effort and in chart types that people are already uh, familiar with. Now, of course, there are other types of insights that I could get from a Marameco chart. Like, for example, that uh, Mercedes here sold a lot of hatchbacks, right? They have kind of a big block in this chart. Well, again, is there maybe a simpler chart type that I could use to communicate this insight? Well, yeah, I could just use a, a regular stack bar chart. If that's what I wanted to say was that Mercedes sold a lot of hatchbacks, you know, that would not be as well communicated by that 100% stack bar chart that we saw before, but again, Always coming back to like, you know, why am I showing the data to this audience? And if and this is the reason to show that Mercedes sold a lot of hatchbacks, then this would be uh, a simpler way of communicating uh, an insight like that. I can also, though, uh, with a Amerameco chart, I can communicate insights like Mercedes hatchbacks account for a sizable portion of the entire vehicle market, which is actually a slightly different insight. Now we're comparing that block to uh, all of the other blocks essentially in, in the chart. Uh, so that block compared to, uh, to everything else. And so in a sense, this, uh, Marimekko chart is actually acting like uh, a tree map. Uh, you might've seen, uh, charts like this before tree maps, but tree maps are actually quite a bit easier to read because the only thing that matters in a tree map is the size of the rectangle, right? The width, the height are, are, are not actually representing anything. And so cognitively, they're much easier to read, which is why you see tree maps probably a lot more often than you see Marimekko charts. And so again, if that's what I wanted to communicate, right, that this particular block, you know, Mercedes hatchbacks account for a sizable portion of everything of the whole market, well, maybe a tree map is going to be a simpler way of communicating that kind of insight. Now, fans of Marimekko charts might argue, well, you know, the strength of a Marimekko chart is its versatility, right? It can communicate all these types of insights within a single chart. And that's true. And in fact, it's quite a kind of a clever chart in, in that sense. But that kind of cleverness or that versatility comes with costs, right? It comes with trade-offs as we've seen 
Uh, it's rare. And so, you know, the audience might not be able to read it because they are just harder to read. Even for audiences that are familiar with this chart type, they're going to have to basically think a lot harder. And, you know, because there's so many things going on, the height, the width, the area, key messages are often not as obvious as they would be in simpler chart types, like the ones that I was showing you uh, before. Like, for example, uh, maybe what I, you know, want to communicate my main insight is that I want to show which brand had the largest market share. Hmm. Okay, well, actually, that's really not clear in a Mary Macro chart like this. So even though Mary Macros are quite versatile, they're actually entire classes of questions and insights that they're not really able to show very clearly. Whereas if that's what I wanted to say, something like a simple stack bar chart where each bar is a brand rather than a segment is going to make that uh, kind of insight more, uh, more clear. Or let's say I, I really want to focus in on BMW here, these green blocks, and show that BMW crossovers had about twice the market share of the overall market as compared with BMW coupes. Okay. So in this case, I need to compare the size, the, 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 the surface area of these two rectangles. And we're just not very good at that kind of uh, task. We're much better at comparing lengths. And so again, a simpler bar chart, where in this case I have stack bars, each uh, stack is a, a segment, allows me to show much more clearly, I would argue, that the BMW crossovers have twice the market share of BMW coupes because I'm comparing lengths rather than surface areas. So yeah, it's going to be just a little bit clearer. So where does this leave us uh, in terms of Aramac with charts? A couple of key takeaways. The first is, uh, as usual, whenever you're creating any chart, you want to first decide what job you want the chart to do. Why are you showing the data to the audience in the first place? Uh, what is the specific insight or insights that you need to communicate, specific questions you need to answer. And then that's going to allow you to choose the simplest possible chart type that does that particular job. And so if you are considering using a Marimekko chart, I would encourage you to try simpler chart types like stack bars and tree maps and some of the ones that we saw uh, earlier in the video to see if they kind of do that job. And they almost always will without imposing all of that extra kind of cognitive work onto the audience. If you want more tips like these, I would encourage you to sign up for my email list. The link is here and I'll also put it in the uh, description of this video. And so you, you can stay up to date on all of the new videos and uh, articles that I post. Thanks very much for watching.